It's good to see you guys. You know, excited for this week. It's good to be home. Uh, a lot of good things on the tape, but, you know, I think specifically um, defensively is a fair amount to improve on. So looking forward to doing that. Um, you know, always impressed with Coach Kleiman and Kansas State. I think they they play a, uh, a game that um, I really respect. I know our staff does. You know, tough, physical. Um, defensively, their effort is outstanding. I think offensively, you know, it's a smart attack. They look for matchups in the passing game. And in the running game, they look for angles and uh, numbers. And so what a uh, challenge we have in front of us. And, um, you know, we fully recognize where we're at and kind of what's at stake and so excited to attack all of it. Take any questions you guys got. Dave, uh, you mentioned K-State and, and, you know, how impressed you are with them. I mean, when you look at the film, what really stands out the most? Physicality, effort, toughness. Um, and those are all things, as a coach, you want to be associated with. And so they're doing that now, you know. And then I think in critical moments and critical times, they're getting big plays by their people. And, you know, they're doing a great job, I think, offensively impressed with their attack and just how they set people up and uh, take advantage of angles and numbers. And in the throw game, you know, they they make the most with everything they got. And so uh, a lot of times you know what's coming and they'll dress it up. And so there's a, there's just a bit enough sleight of hand to where they're taking advantage of you with, uh, you know, the speed and athleticism that they got. So it's impressive to see. They're playing well right now. Adrian Martinez has played in a lot of college football games. What does that do for a team when they have that much experience under center? Uh, no, I appreciate that. I think they, I think he, he feels empowered, you know. I think um, when, when you see him open up, he has really, really good long speed. And so it's, it's impressive to watch. And so we're going to do everything we can to not allow him to open up. And, you know, I think his, he's got good arm strength. I think his anticipation and his ability to throw guys open has improved as the season's gone on. And so I think you know, him just coming back for this one, this last one was, was real positive results, a lot of good things on tape. And so he's definitely a threat uh, and someone we totally see. Dave? Coach, this past week uh, was one of the few weeks that Richard wasn't the leading ball carry, obviously dealing with those flu-like symptoms. But mm -hmm. how good did it feel to kind of have a committee? You talked about that a little bit last week, kind of a running back by committee uh, in that backfield. I appreciate that. I think, you know, um, it's been a work in progress and I think there's still a lot of a lot of area or areas to improve uh, specifically in that running back room. But you look from where we started to where we are now, a lot of improvement and you give the credit to everyone in that room. You know, I think Juice is included in that too, but you look at just Squirrel and his commitment and being down and getting back up countless numbers of times. You look at Richard and taking on the all all the load and the um, uh, managing that load. You know, and you look at Quaylen and just his maturity and growth. I mean, you see all the emotion kind of coming out of him, and so it's a dude just kind of becoming right in front of you, and so just way cool. And we're going to need all of that and more for what we're about what we're about to try to do. You know, so impressed with that room. To build on Parker's question, uh, has, has your running game reached a level where, whether it's Quaylen, whether it's Squirrel, whether it's Richard back there, you feel like you can be productive? I think we're still working to get to that. That would be ideal. I appreciate that question. You know, I think the the opportunity to to be that, I think, is really kind of that's where you want to be. And I think to bring it back, I think that's where K State is at times. You know, I know they've got a real special running back, but some of those creases, those gaps, you know, and the angles that they create, um, you could have um, you could have a couple people back there running it. And so way impressed with them. And I think that's what you'd like to get to, is you'd like to get to where, you know, the plan, the math is all worked out. 
the guys up front or owning the guys that they're against. And you can have uh, someone take a five-yard gain into a 15-yard gain or a 15-yard gain to a 50-yard gain. And so we're, we're hoping to get there. I feel like K-State's there. Dave, how much do you feel like the flu impacted the team last week, and how much do you think that can linger here into this week? Um, appreciate that. I thought that, you know, we had guys that were battling through that, and it kind of it started off in a trickle as it all these things kind of normally do, and towards the end of the week it, it kind of became a thing. Uh, a lot of those guys are back. A lot of times that's a, a day or two thing. And so as we stand right now, I think we're in good in good standing. But we probably were this time last week too, you know, so we've got to continue to to um, to keep things clean, wash our hands, and just do all the stuff that we know we're supposed to be doing and probably need to do better. Dave, what is it about this defense right now? And is it maybe the loss of guys like JT and Jalen and Terrell from last year that they've just been struggling, allowing a lot of points, and where do you improve from here? I think the, the uh, I appreciate the question, the consistent approach throughout the week. I think it's being fierce with reality and not thinking that sh that we or 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 me or he or someone that they're not. Uh, so that's number one. And then number two is um, recognizing that life is hard and that things aren't given to you and that you have to work for things and sacrifice. And I think, um, you know, I think all of those are kind of life lessons uh, that, uh, you know, particularly on that side of it, we're still learning. And I think for us as coaches to, to, to try to model that and not weaponize that and use that as a teaching tool, you know, always difficult when you're collecting and counting the wins and losses. But I think that's really, that's really what it is, is that. Because, you know, it starts on, starts today. It starts on Monday. Coach. Dave, you, all, you mentioned the coaches that sometimes they have maybe not done what they needed to do with the communication, the mm -hmm. growth, and all that. And you've even admitted it. Not mm -hmm. many coaches do that. Mm -hmm. What makes that something you're not afraid to admit? That's uh, the truth. I appreciate the question. I think, um, yeah, I think it's just the truth. So... And, you know, I just think, I mean, I appreciate these things. You know, I th it's good. I think a lot of times speaking to our players through these and through our par our players' parents. And, and I just think, you know, um, for them to, there's always going to be, I think when you care a lot about stuff, there's always going to be, you know, narratives and stories and all of it. The more you can tell the truth thing, the better it is. And because the guys recognize it too. When you're in front of them, they know. And so I think as long as the truth's on your side, you got a chance. Dave, the way that Josh Cameron stepped up in that game, I know you've seen it in practice. Did you see it kind of coming that he would have a game like that? Yeah, it's, yeah I appreciate that. I think, you know, it's funny how it goes. You, you kind of always wish, and I know for them, for, uh, for our young guys, they wish it would just be like this. But so many times it's kind of this, and then you can, you want to try to, especially at the end of the year. And I remember it's September, um, going, you know, whatever we got, let's let's focus on doing simple better. Let's focus on the things we can control, and you have to go through what we control, what we can't, so that we can play our best at the end of the year. And so we're hoping to do that. You know, that's especially when the bullets are flying and we're all pinned down to the ground and looking for cover you know, those were the things, you know. And so I think when I look at that or I remember that, I, I think Josh is kind of in that group. Uh, there's a lot of positive things coming out of fall camp, a lot of positive things coming out of spring ball, and then, you know, kind of up and down, up and down. And just his growth continually these last couple of weeks has just been really, really strong. Strong as a blocker, strong as a receiver, and uh, strong just as a team guy. And it's funny that how all that stuff kind of usually ties us together. And so, proud of him. Dave, uh, you got a big kick this past week from your kicker that ultimately was the difference on the scoreboard. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, as far as John goes, I mean, do you admire his perseverance and sticking it out here at Baylor? And also, too, are you envious of his sideburns at all? Yeah, we've talked about his 
just inability to get a haircut and <laughs> clean up the back of his neck for years. And so maybe one day. As far as his journey at Baylor, though. Uh... Yeah, he, um, it's really cool to see. And what a great lesson for just as aspiring guys. I just, I just, you know, it's not easy, man. Like Life is hard. It's not going to be given to you. You know, once you think you made it, then that's when you get knocked down. And to go through all of that and do it with the class that John did is something special. But then to want to fight for your stuff to get it back is even more so. And then once you've fought and got it back to uh, make some big-time plays and big-time moments, it's pretty cool. Four-team race to the finish in the Big 12. You guys and then the other three teams on your schedule. Is there an excitement and energy with the team knowing that challenge you guys have in front of you? I appreciate that. Um, I, don't, I don't really bring that up. You know, I, I know that I have to imagine that all of our guys know that. And um, I just think, you know, whether it is the beginning of the year and, um, you know, feeling pretty full of ourselves when we really hadn't accomplished anything or it's after beginning of the year in the year having a win and then um, feeling pretty full of ourselves after one win and so you know we've we've kind of um, we have a, a pretty voracious appetite for just good things about us you know and so I think to keep the focus just on what's right in front of us and what we have to do today and, um, you know, to make this meeting we're about to have be the best and the walkthrough we're about to have to be the best and this practice we're about to have to be the best and keep it there, I think, has been what we have been doing these last couple of weeks. And so we're hoping to continue to do that. Dave, uh, Monterey seemed limited on Saturday. Was he dealing with flu stuff or is there another play issue? He's working through a hamstring. Um, you know, I think he could have gone and he did some feel he'll be really in good shape for this next one. Dave, Blake Shapin, at least it appears as if he's a little erratic right now. Mm -hmm. His quarterback rating was like 18, but mm -hmm. the younger receivers seem to be getting a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Does that jive? What's what's happening there? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I thought there was really some good things. I know it was one of those, um, I, I think it was, it was a unique game for Blake in terms of the stats. I thought, you know, um, there was, I think, twice in the game where I think the ball was on our sideline both times. And Oklahoma brought corner pressure, and, you know, our back has that guy and uh, is supposed to scan from the star to the corner and didn't pick him up. And it back releases, and so no one has the corner. And he's coming scot-free. And, and Blake kind of feels it and moves up in the pocket with good footwork and keeps two hands on the ball, which I think – you know, a couple games ago, we were all in the midst of trying to get that done. And it keeps his eyes down the field and completes throws, you know. Um, and so, like, that was just – that was a that was a step. That was a big area of growth. Really cool to see. And then, you know, at the end of the game, we had a big third down. It's a big drive. It was loud. Um, you know, pressure was coming. And uh, Blake's able to move out of the po pocket. Um and get a side-on throw and complete a huge third down, which we really we needed. Um, and it was man, tight coverage. The coverage was being mixed pretty strong at that point. And so those those are the moments that stick out to me where you could just see the growth and everyone in, in the huddle and everyone on the sideline could see that too. And so we're building off of that. I think the the ability to, uh, to clean up, you know, um, these last couple of weeks just with the pressure – you know, both with OU and with Tech, um, you know, our deeper throws, our play-action throws, they really just haven't been a part of just because of the attacks we're getting on either side. And we may get that some with K-State, but I feel like the growth we've had these last couple of weeks are going to get us the best we can be throwing-wise for these last couple of games. Dave, you've talked about kind of finding your identity this year as a team mm -hmm. uh, compared to last year. Have, do you think these past three weeks have really kind of taken a step in the right direction towards finding that identity? I appreciate that. I think the whole thing has. You know, I think the the um, you know the um, 
the unbecoming is part of the 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 becoming you know i think anytime you're you are in a struggle and it ain't working i think like how that's handled has so much to do with um when you're going to come out the other side if you're going to come out the other side the level of trust that you have when you're out the other side you know and so i think the whole thing is is a big a big you know the whole thing is the whole thing and so for us to have that type of growth uh it's pretty cool and we're going to need all of it and more you know we're going to need our best players to play their best here at the end you know and we're going to have to you know, per the previous question or a couple questions ago we have to keep the focus on the day to day i think those two things are strong for us uh we're going to need both of those to win this game uh you know very impressed with Kansas State and they're fighting for everything too and so it'll it'll be a uh, it'll be a hell of a game coach how would you rank your progression with dealing with the crowd noise compared to BYU to what it was last week in Oklahoma when it got pretty loud yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's gotten better, and you would hope that it would, you know. Uh, but I credit to the players for that because, um, you know, there there was uh, for sure some struggles with that BYU game. But really, since then, there has just been um, there just been such a growth and such a confidence, and especially with Blake, and I think just his ease and his confidence is just it's contagious and the guys have kind of taken with that and everything and so you know when the crowd is going crazy the only thing that eliminates that is execution you know I think that last drive with us on offense is an example of that and so you know it'd be great if you could say that to them and they would get it but we've had to kind of learn it the hard way between the field goal, uh, I know Jordan Neighbors had a pretty good kick return, and I think Josh White broke his face mask on a special teams tackle. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel like special teams has progressed over the last few weeks? Appreciate that. Really good. Yeah, might be the biggest improvement on the team. Um, and they're going to be way tested. Uh, very impressed with Kansas State. I think, they're, I think that's part of their whole thing. It's just impressive return game, impressive coverage game. The speed that they play with, the the violence they play with, and so we have to match that more. And you know, there's been really since the bye just growth in our in our special teams units and confidence. And so, um, you know, I think all of that is for all of this right in front of us. And so we'll see. Dave, how do you prepare for a guy like Deuce Vaughn? He's one of the best running backs in the country. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Yeah, um, I appreciate that. I think, first of all, I mean, he runs with such passion and such vision, and uh, his top end speed is good. His quickness is elite. Um, his burst is elite. You know, vision is so strong. And, you know, on top of that, though, I just, I'm just going to say is that they do a great job of creating angles and getting leverage for their run game. I think everything, when I watch Kansas State, so on – when they're on defense versus our offense, everything I feel is by formation. So off of our formations, what do we do? And then whatever they choose to do, it's generally game plan per that week, is the specifically detailed to take away what we do. And it's very tight. You know, there's not a lot of prepackaged meals, you know. You're not in the drive through You're going to have to pull off to the side and wait a little bit because they're cooking it right there, you know. And so, then, but then I think when it's when we're on defense and they're on offense, right? They're going to get whether it's a trade uh, with a tight end or it's a motion. They're going to get their angles that they want. And so the run, the the runs that there's a couple. Of, I mean, there's some 60 yard runs or some 50 yard runs. And the quarterback's in there, too, um, with their quarterback run game. But I'm telling you, some of these gaps are just – and I think a lot of that is the, the work that all of them are putting into it. And so, yeah, the whole thing's impressive. The, to this date, the best running attack we've, we've faced for sure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.